Welcome back to the shop. So today we are going to be making a reamer. Um, so for one of my upcoming projects, I need to make a tapered reamer to make two very small tapered holes. Um, this sort of thing is likely available commercially for what I'm looking for um, in the form of like for clocks and that kind of thing. Uh, maybe a little bit big for a clock, but the uh, idea is to show you how you might go about making a pr fairly precise tapered reamer uh, at home, just out of 01, and with relatively common tools that any machine shop should have. Um, of course, then we're going to harden, temper, and then hone it. So hopefully you'll find something interesting in this video, or something helpful at least. first operation is over at the lathe and I have our piece of stock clamped in and we're uh, I've got my compound set to uh, about a degree or so and I'm just going to cut that taper on here basically until this whole area cleans up because that's about how long I need mine um, depending on what taper you're trying to cut and how long you need your reamer to be obviously it's going to vary uh, this one's really quite small um, I don't need it to be very big at all. So I'm actually going to go ahead and lock my carriage in place with my compound all the way over so I can't hit my collet. I do recommend if you can running this in a collet just because in my case this 01 at least was precision ground. The end of it's a little bit uh, messed up. But uh, that'll make it so that later on when we want to form our shank it'll be nice and easy. As always, whenever you're using abrasives on your lathe, you got to put a towel or something down. I prefer using stones on the lathe to do my polishing over sandpaper because um, sandpaper, especially with small parts, it can get wrapped around the part. I also prefer to do it with a collet in place because there's not really anything here for um, my hands to get caught on. Now, off to the mill. Alright, so now that we have our part in the milling machine, we need to indicate our part in so that our taper is running uh, parallel with the table of our milling machine. And we can sweep. And so we have about 15 thou over that length. And then we're going to get... I usually either use my dead blow hammer for small stuff, I just use a 2x4. This is a very cheap dividing head and a relatively cheap, well, relatively cheap milling machine. So I'm always worried about either the table of the mill or the bottom of the dividing head not being very flat. And then when I, I tighten it, it pulls it out. And sometimes it's a lot, or sometimes it could be substantial. And in this case, it does appear to have pulled it. Now we need to get our cutter aligned vertically with the work. So for that, I'm just going to slowly lower my spindle until I can't quite hear it touching there. Spinning the work, the cutter backward. I could do this under power, but for reference, this is a 12,000 slitting saw. All right, I heard it there. 
There we go. Right there. That's us. Uh, all right. So now we need our the diameter of our work. 197, 198. All right, so now we need to move down half the diameter of our work. So now the bottom of our cutter is directly on the center line. Now, if we were making our, our reamer cut left hand, then we could go ahead and make our cut. But uh, because we want to cut right hand, we need the we need our edge to be right on center. So this is a 12,000 slitting saw. I'm gonna go ahead and move my cutter down 12 thousandths and then just a bit. Why just a bit? Well, because we need a little bit of space to sharpen. And when I say just a bit, I'm gonna go with half a thou on my dial. Um, we need our cutting edges to be uh, either directly in line or just very, very slightly uh, behind center. Otherwise, we won't have any relief and, well, our cutter won't cut. So now that we're in line there, I'm going to go ahead and lock the head of my mill down so that it can't move. And I think I'm going to go with, um, I think I'm going to go with three flutes. I don't know exactly how far in I'm going to go, not super far. Maybe, I don't know, 20 thou, 10, 20 thou. I know my slitting saw is wobbling quite a bit, and it won't hurt us for this since it's not ultra, ultra precise. pretty good there so that should be all of our cutting edges formed again neutral rake and now what we're going to need to do is cut the relief otherwise our cutter is not going to be doing any cutting at all uh, if you put it in a hole right now and you spun it, it it wouldn't do anything it wouldn't cut I mean it wouldn't cut because it's not hardened but it wouldn't cut because the geometry isn't right you have to have some relief I have a four flute solid carbide end mill 3 8 inch diameter in the spindle and I have turned my dividing head to read 280 degrees. Um, so this is going to be cutting the relief, uh, the, the back relief for the cutting edge for the one that was cut with the slitting saw at 240 degrees on the dial. I started at zero. You could uh, go back to zero and start at 40 degrees in this case. Um, gives me roughly the right back relief for my cutting edge. It's not, it doesn't need to be super precise, but it does need to be there. This will be the final cut that we need to take. And this is gonna go ahead and cut away the material that is in front of our cutting edge. So I have it set up right now, 270 degrees on the dial, and I have my cutter set up to where the edge is just inside the slitting saw cut that we made earlier. And we don't want to go over that, we just want to barely cut it away. <laughs> I've just got it in the lathe and I'm going to go ahead and just clean up the, the shoulder bit because it looks a little nasty. I just went and cut it off with some bolt cutters and now we'll go ahead and clean up the shank. So now on to hardening. I'm just going to go ahead and use a propane torch and since this is O1, I have some used motor oil to dunk it in. And that looks pretty good there. 
try to put it in straight. It's quite a bit of smoke with used motor oil, but you know. So now on to stoning the edges. It's going to be kind of hard for me to show you this, but I'm going to try. Uh, so the first thing, I'm going to get the edge that is the relief for our cutting edge. That looks pretty good. So I dug a piece of aluminum out of the scrap bin with a hole that just happens to be the right size. I've uh, tested this in the past. I used this for testing my rotary brooch in the past. So I'm just using a drill chuck to drive this very gently. And I did accidentally make it counterclockwise. Now you could just put a square on the end of this and use like a small tap wrench. It's like we're getting some chips. Check the flutes, not feeling really any resistance, which is good. Well, now usually I would want to make the section that the chips are going to gather up in the section in front of the cutting edges uh, a bit deeper, which will just help with giving the chips a, be a, a bigger place to go. So you have to take it out because you can see we're getting chips that are packing themselves in there. All right, well, our cutting edges are intact. I cleared out all the chips. Let's take a look at the hole. 